Hey guys, it's Shelby, otherwise known as Shelbizzle here on YouTube. I said I wasn't going to upload this week because I've been sick, but you know what? I'm feeling a little bit better, although I know I probably still sound a little bit sick. I have my voice back. I didn't have my voice for a good five days. I don't know what I was sick with because health insurance in America... You feel me? I just sucked it up and got through the sickness and here we are. But I didn't want to get too far into July without talking about my June no spend challenge, catching you guys up on how successful or not successful I was. I've been taking little vlog snippets here and there throughout the whole month when I talked myself out of buying things and when I made my mistakes. So I'll insert those clips throughout this video. But I wanted to let you guys know that this video is brought to you by one of my favorite sponsors, which is the app Buns. Because we're going to be talking about not buying things, it's a really cool app to talk about in this case. A really brief explanation of what the app is, is it's completely free to download. There's no money involved in exchanging goods on the app. You don't have to buy anything. Anything. you're not really selling anything you're just trading with people in your area I'll talk more about buns throughout this video but if you want to go ahead and help me out and support one of my sponsors I really appreciate it especially when an app sponsors me to do a no buy I mean how much cooler can an app get right so check the link at the very top of the description and download it start trading with people in your area I'm gonna show you guys something that I traded for this month to avoid buying anything further into this video but Without further ado, let's talk about some things that I did instead of buying things this month. You'll have to forgive me if my energy is a little low, the sun is not really out, I'm recovering from sickness a little bit still, and yeah, I just, I'm not in the best headspace, but I wanna get this done. So, you might know that one of the main reasons I decided to do a no buy was because whenever I moved into this house, I wanted to fill it with plants. I literally think we own uh, close to 70 house plants now, not including my succulent garden that has like 10 succulents in it. I just counted that as one. But plants are one of the main reasons that I realized I was spending too much money on things I didn't need to be. So what did I do this month instead of buying new plants? Or not this month now because it's July, but last month in June, what did I do? I've got a vlog snippet for you, so let's cut to that. A lot of people were telling me I should learn to propagate my plants, I should propagate my plants, propagate, propagate, propagate. So that is what I am doing. I had this little propagation station before I did the no buy, bought it at a local nursery in Austin called Tillery and I'm going to try to propagate some of the plants I already have to make more plants without spending any money. So let's, uh, I'll show you these guys. So the way that you propagate plants or most plants that can be propagated, not all plants can be propagated, but the ones that can, you basically take like a cutting and then you put it into just water usually. Some things can be put directly into soil, but usually it's easier to let things grow roots and water. So that's what's happening over here. I have a spider plant and a Brazil philodendron right now, but I have also a pilea downstairs that is in rough shape that I want to try to propagate before it goes downhill. And we're going to put it in the third little test tube looking thing back there. So let's go downstairs and grab him. All right, so this is my Pilea plant. Her name is Lily. She took quite the fall when I got her, as in um, I dropped her on accident, and she's been not doing so great ever since. I haven't even been able to repot her because I'm scared to put her through the stress of repotting. So she's still in her little nursery thingy-majigger. Why is this not focusing? Focus. But she has a baby growing right there so we're gonna get him out and put him in the propagation station let's see this one's already growing quite a bit it's really i really feel bad because i feel like the soil is dry it's just not doing good i want it to do better all right let's try to get this little guy out all right so here's this little guy i'm gonna go put his roots upstairs in the propagation station like i showed you what a little cutie. Now he can go up there with the rest of them. Just drop it down there. Okay. And then the hope is that he's going to grow roots. Um, I think this one actually just fell off of my plant and I stuck it in here. I think it's cut too far down. I have to cut it up higher to get it to grow roots. But my spider plant is already growing roots. That's what that white stuff is right there. So this is a really cool way if you're doing a no spend, largely because you need to stop spending money on plants. 
cool way to get more plants for free. So aside from filling my plant baby void with propagation, I also traded for some plants on buns. Now this is one of the reasons I really love buns because you can trade with people in your area and when people have house plants on there, so exciting. So I have, or I have had like six satin pothos. So if you guys know what those are, if you don't, I'll insert a clip of one of mine. They're beautiful. I've been propagating one for a while and it turned into its own little plant. So I decided that I could trade that plant if somebody else had a plant that I wanted. And guess what? They did. So let me show you. He's right here. Oh God. This is my new ZZ plant. I believe the girl who traded me this with the sil for the silver pothos, she also grew this from a cutting. I think that's what she was telling me. Um, regardless, this is a ZZ plant. They're very well known for being very easy to take care of, not requiring a lot of light or anything like that. So I did trade for this guy on buns. He didn't cost me any money. And honestly, where I've seen ZZ plants at my local nursery and at like Home Depot and stuff like that, they get pretty pricey. So to get one, with Without having to pay for him I thought was really really cool so if you guys don't have the buns app like I said this whole no buy was actually sponsored by buns the app is pretty new it's a really big deal in Canada that's kind of where it's taken like off the most before it started expanding into basically everywhere and I always ask when I talk about buns do you have buns in your area basically is it active is it something that you can start utilizing and if not I highly encourage you to invite all of your friends to list what you have laying around your house that you might want to trade for on buns because the more things you just have listed out there then when a new person comes to the app it looks like people are using it and there are things that people can trade for it so like we changed our chandelier not last month but I guess in May we changed the chandelier that was in our home and I put our old one up on buns just because I didn't want it anymore and I needed to get rid of it and I could trade with someone else who maybe wanted something but while it's sitting in my house because I don't want to just toss it I can put it up on buns and anybody coming by can see that so I walked around my garage as well and just took pictures of other things to put up there that are just sitting around my house that I could trade for something that I need. That way we're not buying anything, not contributing to the consumerist society, consumerist economy <laughs> at all when we are trading on buns. So if you haven't already downloaded it, make sure you do. If you've already downloaded it before, I highly encourage you start posting things that are sitting around your house on there and you never know what someone will want to trade you for those things. It's a really awesome place to go. So make sure you download it today. When I started this video, I wasn't 100% sure what format I wanted it to be in. Did I want to talk about all the things I talked myself out of buying first, how well I did first, and then talk about how not so great I did in some areas at the end, but this is one that's kind of intermingled together. So long story short, basically before we even moved here, this was back when we still lived in our little garage apartment, I bought four Lush bath bombs. I literally, we were walking past Lush walking past Lush. Try to say that four times fast. We were walking past Lush one day after we had put in our offer on the house and we were in the process of like closing on the house and I said, I'm gonna have a bathtub soon. I want some bath bombs. So we walked into Lush, I bought four bath bombs. This was back in April, maybe even March. But I didn't really have the opportunity to use them because we've been so busy until one day in June, Madison was gonna be out of town for a business trip and I thought of two things. The night before she was going to leave, I didn't even think, where are the bath bombs? I didn't even think to look for them. I just had in my mind, they're in my bathroom closet. That was it. But then I also thought, I don't have a bath tray to put like my laptop up there or like a drink up there or anything that you would want during your bath that you don't want to fall in the water. You need a bath tray for. So I decided I couldn't buy a bath tray, like one of the nice cute little wood ones that everybody else has because I'm on a no buy. What could I use instead? And I thought of this one piece of wood that used to be above our bed in our old apartment. And I have some clips of that for you, so roll it. Just got back from the gym, and I wanted to do this project. I just told Madison about it. Um, one thing I just talked myself out of buying is a bath tray. So I thought about buying one, and if this was any other month, I probably would have just found one by a slightly sustainable brand and bought it. But since we're doing a no buy, and I'm talking myself out of buying everything, and my makeup looks crazy because we got back from the gym. Anyway, since we're doing that, we are going to just cut this piece of wood that we have in the garage and make it into a bath. What do you call it, tray? Mm -hmm. Okay. You count the tips of the head? He's like, no, mom. Stop, mom. 
Baby, what is he doing? That's my measurements. What is he doing? I'm gonna say he's 30 inches. Oh my god, baby, you're so long. You coming? Come on, we're going upstairs. He's like, no, maybe not, mom. So like here? Yeah, it needs to go, maybe not all the way here, but yeah, across this. Okay, and you said it needs to go to the middle? Just what does it say and then we'll subtract like an inch? Uh, 42. Okay, so we'll do 41. Get a hammer. A hammer? Get a hammer. For what? What? What do I have to do? Oh. good there and not buying a bath tray then the next night comes around and I'm digging through my under my sink I'm digging through my bathroom closet can't find my lush bath bombs anywhere it was very disappointing to me that I waited like two or three months to take a bath in this house with these bath bombs and then they just weren't there so I turn on the water I'm filling up the bathtub I start frantically looking for my bath bombs because I thought they were under my sink this whole time I just I thought that's where they would be. If they're gonna be anywhere, that's where they would be. So I open up the sink, not there. I'm like, okay, maybe they're in the towel closet. Surely, like they, they are, if they're not under my sink, they've gotta be in the towel closet. So I open the towel closet, look through all the shelves, no bath bombs. I come down to my office. I look through both of these closets. I look through my whole office. I look in the garage, I look in my car, I look everywhere. They're nowhere to be found. <laughs> and I'm so, pissed i'm like literally i've been looking forward to this for months at this point years really because i haven't had a bath in like three years so i went to lush today and not only did i buy bath bombs i did a lot of damage like it it's beyond what needed to happen but you know i'm just gonna just gonna turn the camera around for you <laughs> oh man well they're all blue, by the way, because I really want to have blue bath water. Um, and I bought, let's see how many I bought, because I told my sister I did this, and she's like, how many did you get? Like, honestly, I didn't count. I just put what I liked in the, bag, in the baggie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that it? Okay, so eight bath bombs. <laughs> and I thought, well, this doesn't really count, because I'm just replacing what I lost, and... I don't know. I tried to convince myself that it didn't really count and then I went a little crazy and I bought way more than I needed to. <sighs> so that was a bit of a fail, but you know what? You win some, you lose some. I don't feel terrible about it. Now I'm going to quickly ramble through the things on my list that I talked myself out of buying this month. One is a straw for my hydro flask. So I don't know if you guys know this, but there are attachments for hydro flasks that like, um, the straw will flip up and down. My sister has one and it, she drinks so much water because of it. And I think that I would too, but it's something that I've gone without for many, many years and I figured I could go the rest of June without it. And if I still want it in July, then I can buy it. Another thing I almost completely messed up on is Pacifica foundation. So Pacifica came out with a new foundation, super natural packaged in glass. I love Pacifica as a company in general. Um, and I almost broke down and bought it. I think I have a clip of when that happened. I quite literally almost just completely fucked up. So I was sitting here um, and I found out that Pacifica released a new foundation. This looks crazy. 
whatever. I'm just gonna make this quick. Um, and I was literally about to buy it. I put three in my cart, the three that I think is probably my color, and I start justifying it as people are always asking me for recommendations about more eco-friendly makeup products. So it's fine. This is justifiable for like my job, which is always annoying, weird to say. And then I was like, you're literally not supposed to be buying anything. It's day four, it's June 4th, and you have three Pacifica foundations in your checkout. Like, what are you doing? And I started to realize that those will still be there after this month, which defeats the principle of like not buying things long term. But at the same time, for this month, I'm not supposed to be buying it. I'm not completely out of foundation yet. You guys know I used to dumpster dive, and so I still have a lot of things left over from those days. That's what I'm still using up. So I didn't need to buy it right now. So I just talked myself out of buying it that way. Just wanted to let you know. But I talked myself out of buying that. I also talked myself out of buying a pet hair remover for our couches. It's something that probably needs to be purchased, but I figured if I put it off long enough, then maybe I would figure out another way to do it with something I already have instead of buying like a whole nother device to do so, if that makes sense. Uh, Girlfriend leggings. So there's this brand called Girlfriend. They are so, so cool. So the only thing um, about them that's not super accessible is the pricing. Um, that's a conversation I wanna have more of. Like people think that $60, $70 for a pair of leggings is just crazy, but Really what's crazy is paying people slave wages and then getting leggings for like 10 or $20. I don't, it's just my humble opinion, but that's a whole different conversation separate from this video. Anyway, so I talked myself out of buying girlfriend uh, brand leggings. They're all made from plastic waste, the leggings are. So they're upcycled, recycled, whatever you wanna call it. And then their sizing is so inclusive, you guys. It goes from extra, extra small, which very few brands do that, which is really cool. And it goes all the way up to 6X. This is the only brand I've ever seen do that. And it's really allowing people of all shapes and sizes to be able to, you know, be fit, be healthy, and have ethical and sustainable workout gear to do so in. So I talked myself out of buying their leggings. I've been talking myself out of buying their leggings for a while. Um, I might buy some in the future. If you guys have ever bought from them, let me know your experience. And if you've never heard of them, well, I'm really sorry because you're gonna go to their website and you're gonna want everything on there. I also talked myself out of buying tennis shoes because I almost bought like two new pair of tennis shoes. Um, the ones I have are literally five years old. They are bright blue and green and they just don't go with like everything. You know, when you're going to the gym, you're wearing like a white top and black leggings and bright blue tennis shoes. And they're like five years old and kind of worn down. Probably not the best thing for support. And so I am gonna get new tennis shoes soon. I just don't know from where or what brand or anything like that just yet. And last thing I have on here that I talked to myself out of buying is a peacock chair at TJ Maxx. <sighs> okay. So I'll put a picture of what a peacock chair is here, but that's not why I'm taking a deep sigh and want to get deeper into this topic. I don't know how I feel about TJ Maxx. So it's really confusing because they market themselves as being like a factory outlet. Like things that traditional manufacturers don't sell, it gets sent to TJ Maxx and then they sell it. Which sounds kind of like a secondhand store or like a store where if you're going and buying from, you're not creating a demand for more products to be made because those products were going to be thrown away anyway. Like if it wasn't for TJ Maxx reselling them, they wouldn't be sold. At least that's how they market themselves. Now I'm not completely sure how true this is. I don't know how to figure out how true this is. And therefore it makes me not sure if I can say it's okay to shop there or not. If what they're marketing themselves as is true, then I think it's fine to shop there, maybe not all the time, maybe not excessively, maybe not instead of charity shops and nonprofits. But if you need something that you haven't been able to find secondhand or that you would normally buy like in a regular news store, but you wanna buy it at TJ Maxx, like they have skincare and health stuff and all kinds of stuff that basically you might be buying new all the time, but you could go to TJ Maxx and buy it and it's kind of like secondhand. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not really even sure where the conversation started that maybe they aren't what they say they are, but I know that conversation is out there. And so, yeah, I'm still kind of held out on that, but uh, that's one of the places I almost did completely mess up because my cousin loves TJ Maxx and we went to, I think, 
four different TJ Maxx's when she was in town in June and I had to talk myself out of buying a ton of things and I grabbed some footage of when we were there as well when we were in TJ Maxx so I'll include some of that right now. You guys might remember my cousin Lisa from the I Tried Zero Waste series. She's got me in TJ Maxx and I found this. Look at this cuteness purse. She's the worst influence ever. Look at how cute. <laughs> it's so soft. It has How many this. bags did you buy yesterday? Uh, like one-ish, two-ish, two. -ish, two. <laughs> I want you to tell them how you feel about me carrying the same bag for two years. It's very sad that she doesn't have choices. She should have choices. Help choices. I mean, technically you bought a lot of things you didn't need, but you didn't get a single plastic bag. I made her load up that purse that she bought. Look at you go. Perfect. Here's what's happening. My cousin is in town. All she wants to do is shop, but I did just find this at TJ Maxx. This is Nelly's laundry soap. And I've heard about it before. I've been recommended it before. It comes in an aluminum thing um, and it's just powder in there. And I kind of want to get it and test it out for you guys. So $13, am I allowed to buy that? I don't know, I feel really left out because now my sister's here and my cousin's here and they're all shopping. That's like what we're doing to spend time together, but I'm the only one not buying anything. But yeah, all in all, I think I did pretty good this month on my no buy. I didn't spend excessive amounts of money. I definitely spent a lot less money than I did the months of March, April, and May. I consider that a pretty good, uh, balance if you will. I think it was a really good reset for me and as I said before the reason I think it's really important that I did this no buy is because I used to be a hyper consumer. I used to just buy whatever I want whenever I wanted. Didn't think about the consequences or the resource use from our environment. Didn't think about how where that thing was going to end up after I was done using it. Didn't think about anything. Didn't think about the fact that I was like putting myself in a financial hardship because I didn't have the money to spend back then. Yeah I didn't think about any of that and I think this kind of gave me a reset and also one thing I want to say really quick here at the end had people say like oh I don't have the option to do a no buy it's not an option for me or I don't not shop because I want to sp spend less I upload a video called how to stop shopping and quite a few comments were like oh I just don't shop because I don't have money I just want to say that that's not the mentality of a lot of Americans just that alone not shopping because you don't have the money is an accomplishment in the US because so many people just have debt, just credit card debt, and they go into debt to have nice things so that they can keep up with the Joneses. So even if you're not shopping because you don't have the money, you're still accomplishing a lot more than a lot of people do. People literally go into debt over this sort of stuff. And I'm not discounting anybody who doesn't shop because they don't have money. I, I understand that too, but please understand that I used to be a shopaholic when I didn't have the money to do so either. I would spend other people money I racked up a credit card um, that my mom that's a long story but anyway not having money does not stop a lot of people and that's also why I think it's important to talk about things we're not buying why we shouldn't be buying them why we are tricked by consumerism to think we need things that we don't that's kind of one of the big reasons I make this content is to help people understand not to put themselves in the debt over society's expectations or what you think you should be buying or you see haul videos that other people put on the internet and you think well I want to be able to do that someday or look up to people who own like 20 Gucci bags and that's the ask inspiration of what successful looks like I really want to be the place on the internet to tell people that you don't have to do those things so yeah thank you guys so much for watching I'm really excited to hear how your no spend challenge in the month of June went I know some of you have told me you're gonna do it in the month of July so that's really exciting too I love to hear your comments in the comment section let me know don't forget to check out my sponsor buns it is completely free to download completely free to trade with people in your area and then you can also get rewards to spend at local cafes so not only are you not spending money you're Kind of earning money it's pretty cool so make sure you check them out there the link at the top of the description and remember until next time you cannot do all the good that the world needs but the world needs all the good that you can do bye guys <laughs>